It's been a month since Android O's release date, and since we're just waiting for the second version to be released, I thought I'd show you my top 5 favorite new features this big update comes with. The first new feature that most users will appreciate is the modification to the notifications. When you drag down the bar, each icon of the notifiers will have a neat animation floating across the screen to take up their position. And when you open the quick settings or close the notification panel, the icons slip back down and line up. I don't know why, but I find it to be very satisfying. If you slightly slide a notification to the right or left, you'll see a new icon that wasn't there before. This will let you snooze the notification for a certain amount of time and reassert itself after the timer is up. For example, if you receive a message and you want to respond later but you don't want the particular notification in your face, you can dismiss it for 30 minutes and have it pop up again when the 30 minutes are up. Lastly, if you long press on one of them, notification channels will pop up. It may not seem like a huge deal at first, but this is a great feature if you just want to block certain notifications from an app and not have to completely mute it like before. Long gone is the huge decision to block an app completely or deal with the annoying spams because there are certain notifications you need to see. This next one has to do with ambient display. This feature is a bit controversial as Google changed the entire layout and some think it's a drawback. Double tapping the screen will activate it but it only displays the time and some app icons for your notifications. Andrew Nougat on the other hand provided much more information at a glance. Kind of a bummer. Still, double tapping on the icons will turn on the screen and when you receive a message, such as a Google Hangouts message, green text will appear to let you know that it's a Hangouts message and from there you can tap on reply to respond quickly. The color changes depending on which app it is. It's still pretty buggy though, so hopefully Google is still working on more features as it's just too minimalistic. We've seen this feature before on other skins or ROMs and that is the option to customize the lock screen shortcuts to any other application or task. You can find it within the system UI tuner and enabling it is just as simple as selecting the left or right shortcut and choosing a certain app. So if you want to launch Google Photos, add a new reminder, compose an email, and so on, right from the lock screen you can do that. The settings is the next top feature and it is definitely the most noticeable change on this first release. The layout and color scheme are completely different with less categories on the homepage and there is no slide out menu anymore. In fact, it's such a huge change that I sometimes have a hard time finding certain toggles, so I have to revert to the search function and keep in mind that I've been using the Android operating system since the G1. It's definitely a great approach to organizing everything better, the battery and storage sections have a new design, and once I get used to the interface, I'll be able to navigate the settings much faster than when I was on Nougat. Oh, and the Android O Easter egg looks like this, but it still functions as the old Nougat Easter egg, so I guess we'll just have to wait for now. The last huge change is that you can now customize the navigation bar to change the layout of the keys and add in new ones. Options include compact, which squeezes the buttons together, right-leaning and left-leaning for an ease of one-handed use, clipboard to drag and paste text into certain text fields, keyboard switcher to switch between keyboards when you're typing, and the most exciting one is key code, which adds two extra buttons with a wide variety of functionality. This one is bound to be updated or used in an app for better usability, but for now you can add two extra buttons on each side of the nav bar and assign them to open apps, toggle certain settings, control your music player, and so much more. To do this, go to the Android Developers website, I'll leave a link down below. Look for a certain action that you want your extra button to accomplish, write down the constant value, I'll just choose 88, which lets me play and pause my music on Spotify, and paste it into the right or left key code. Make sure to also choose an icon as you probably don't want a blank spot that randomly does things. This is definitely my favorite feature so far on Android O as most important apps or tasks are now at my disposal at all times. Anyways, those are the top 5 new features found in Android O. I only showed you 5 because most of the new changes are quite minor and under the hood. I'll just briefly mention the more popular and bigger ones so you don't complain. You have picture in picture mode which will allow you to shrink a video down into a floating window so you can do other things on a device. A possible support for themes which currently only has two options, invert and pixel, which only changes the looks of the notification shade and quick settings panel, and only works on the pixel so far. So I'm not sure if it'll stick around, but it would be great if it does. Autofill Framework, which allows password manager apps to autofill login credentials within certain apps and the browser, and adaptive icons to have third-party developers alter their icons border with shaped masks to follow a more materialistic design. All great improvements are sure to make us awe and amazement. Let me know in the comments what features you would like to see on the next Android O update. Make sure to subscribe if you loved what you saw, and check out AndroidPolice.com for your latest and greatest news on Android. I'll catch you guys in the next one.